So, the average React or Next.js user like you and me probably are loads their images one of two ways. In Next.js, you use the built-in image component, which sucks for two reasons. First off, you don't get a loading state unless you provide a base64 encoded image at build time, which you don't have for basically any dynamic image. So an image just kind of pops up on the screen while it's done loading, which looks pretty horrendous. And secondly, the next image can get very expensive, very, very fast. Five dollars per 1000 images? But Josh, I hear you say, there's good alternatives. You can use tools like image proxy and just use the regular HTML image tag. Those tools, turns out, are also very, very, very expensive. Let's get into Josh's beautiful and cheap guide to optimize images on your own infrastructure. Condition supply. Starting with step one, that's getting our own server. This server has two endpoints. There's the post endpoint and the purpose of the post is to prepare images for us to serve them really, really fast in our application. And secondly, there's the get endpoint. And the purpose of the get is to serve the images that we prepared in the post request in step one. Now let's implement that in Node.js and turns out it's not hard. Now I'm going to skip all the boring crap for you, right? I, I marked this as start of boring crap and end of boring crap because really there's not a lot of logic going on here. Let's get to the fun part, right? Once we submit an image to this post endpoint right here, which is a regular Node.js HTTP endpoint, let's put that image into our file storage. Let's also create a thumbnail, a resized and blurred version of the image using Sharp, which is a high performance Node.js image library into our file system. And lastly, we're gonna respond with success with a 201 created status code from our post endpoint. Now what that's gonna do is if we open up the terminal, I've already prepared the command here and we upload an image of Shrek to this post API endpoint. Let's see what happens. Let's hit enter. We get a success message. And if we now take a look at the file system in our app right here, we can see a Shrek thumbnail.jpg, which is a very tiny thumbnail. It's like 10 pixels wide and the actual image that we just uploaded. Beautiful dude, that's step one. Now step two is getting something like this, rendering the placeholder in our actual app. So let's start doing that. I've already placed a custom image with a size of 80 right here on our page. Right now we can't see it because there's nothing in this custom image component and why is there a poop emoji here anyways we're gonna make this component take up all the space it can and render out a next.js image now don't worry this works also with the regular html image but the next image is a bit more convenient with a 10 pixel size so it's always the smallest version for the thumbnail a priority tag so this loads as soon as possible to prevent any kind of layout shift the actual source which matches the name in our file system and lastly the loader property the loader is the added convenience over the regular image that i mentioned we can simply grab the source and other properties like the width and the quality of the image, which for the thumbnail we don't care about, it's always 10 pixels wide, and simply enter a custom URL. In that case, that's our Node.js server to serve this thumbnail to our front end. And once we hit save, we can see the thumbnail pop up right there. Beautiful. Technically, I lied to you because we don't even have the route that serves images just yet, and that's the fun part, right? Let's implement that together. We're going to create a get route in our Node.js server with a source. This is using Hono, by the way, which is just, you know, for type safety with TypeScript, it's nice, but you can use Express, any other framework that you want for Node.js. And in here, we're first gonna grab some stuff from the request, like the width of the image that we want, or if this is the thumbnail request. And in our case, because right now we're just worrying about the thumbnail, it will always be the thumbnail. So let's handle that case first. In that case, we're first gonna read the image from our local file system, right here, the Shrek thumbnail, the 10 pixel wide image, and serve that image as a response. Now, of course, if you want to make this more performant, you could put this into a CDN, you could implement caching and so on. But this is the fundamental implementation for a really fast loading thumbnail. Great. So we've got that part done. We've got a killer placeholder loading right now in our app. But what's missing is the main image. So there is just the placeholder, but we never actually put the full image here. Let's implement the backend code first. And it's pretty, pretty simple. We get the original image that we put into our file system, the Shrek.jpg right here. And once we get a request for this image, we can first adjust the quality to make it better or worse. We automatically resize the image on the fly to the size that is served in the user's browser to never load an image that is too large. And lastly, convert it to a buffer that we can then send directly as a response to the client. 
client. And now comes probably one of the coolest parts of this all, and that is the custom Next.js loader for the original image. And now comes the fun part. So we can pass this a source. This also needs to match whatever we put into a file system. So that's going to be Shrek.jpg. And now the most important property of them all, it's going to be our loader. It gives us access to the image parameters that are optimized for the current user's browser, like the source, which is literally just forwarding the prop we put in here, the width of the image optimally as we should serve it to the user, and the quality, which is optimal we can default it to something like 50 I believe 75 is the default so let's go ahead and implement that loader to optimally serve the user image from our own server from our infrastructure right let's name it loader and define that function right up here let's start out with receiving all the data that the loader gets passed automatically like the optimal width the quality and the source and then handle the logic which is extremely straightforward we're going to create an array of props that we want to pass to our server to optimally show the image that starts with the width and if there is a quality provided then we're also going to pass that as a request parameter to our server lastly we're going to join them together and send them off to our server the most important step send them to a running node.js server we're telling the server hey we want to show Shrek image, which is the source, in this and this quality and this and this width. And our server handles the rest. Let's save this and see what happens. Let's reload our page and bam, we load the placeholder first and then there is the Shrek image. Now granted, the image is kind of distorted, but we can easily fix that by simply passing a class name that matches our thumbnail, the object cover, the height and width of full and bam. Now the Shrek image doesn't look distorted anymore and we instantly load the placeholder. We can verify that in our network tab, by the way. Let's go over here to the images and let's reload the page. We can see there are two images loaded right here. First off, the placeholder with a thumbnail true, which is about 500 bytes and it only took two milliseconds to render. Because we marked it with a priority, it loads instantly on request and only when the other image is loaded is it then put over the thumbnail thumbnail to kind of render the entire image. And one big convenience of the Next.js image component is as we shrink the page, the width that we need to render the image in gets lower, right? So the full HD version is one megabyte large, but if the image is displayed smaller, then we only get a 142 kilobyte image. Perfect. Now there's one fun thing we can do to the quality, and that is if we put the quality to zero and we tried serving the image, it looks absolutely uncanny. I just figured this out by accident, but oh my God, dude, no Oh, revert that. But one very cool last thing I want to show you is a beautiful transition between the images once the main image is done loading, right? I think it it's a tiny thing, but it makes this whole thing look so much nicer. So let's implement an is loading state into our class name that just changes the opacity once the main image is loaded. We're going to keep track of that loading state in nothing else than plain react state, right? We can just paste the state right here. We're keeping track of the loading state. And last thing we can do is on the main image itself, this takes an on loading complete prop in which we can just set the loading state to a false to indicate that we're done loading. And once we save that, and you can now see beautiful transition that takes exactly 150 milliseconds. Maybe it's easier to see if I put this up to like one second right here. It beautifully fades in from the placeholder to the actual image. I left two things mainly away for simplicity, which is caching. That's really, really important. So you can just, you know, create your own cache with something like Cloudflare or AWS. I use Cloudflare for my own personal projects and CDNs. You want to serve your image from a CDN and not directly from a server. But those things are really fast to implement. They're very basic. The approach I showed you in this video, I actually use myself. That's why I'm telling you about it. It works super well for us and I hope it does for you too. So that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and you can use it in your own project. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.